into our devotion this Friday morning. Uh, we are going to step into uh, another couple of parables. We're going to look at it a little bit differently because I really want to look at the whole subject of you know, disillusionment and discouragement, despondency, uh, all those D words that kind of kind of sum up how so many people are feeling right now in view of uh, the lockdown, in view of corona, uh, in view of what's going on in our world today. And uh, I want to read from Matthew 13 verse 31. So he told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, to man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. And Jesus spoke all these things to the crowd in parables. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. So may God bless his word to us this morning. We are living in uncertain and turbulent times to say the least. And I'm not just saying that because of COVID. Uh, you might say that COVID is the cherry on the top. Even before COVID, we found ourselves lamenting over the state of our nation, uh, all the ills that I certainly don't need to highlight here, many of which have just come to the fore during this pandemic. And yes, we are deeply distressed by the escalation in farm murders, gender-based violence, corruption and crime and so on. But all of these things were deeply entrenched in our society long before lockdown. I fear that too much has been placed at the feet of COVID or lockdown, when most of these things were, were, were there before. And so, yes, people are understandably discouraged by what they are witnessing in our country and in the world right now. People are discouraged because of the increase in the incidence of COVID-19 infections, uh, other health issues, the economy, uh, job losses, bankruptcies, uh, escalation in crime, families that are breaking up, marriages that are under pressure, children who aren't able to go to school, and so we could just go on. And for many, it is just simply a, a, a deep concern about the future and the uncertainty thereof, and whether, you know, we get to recover from all of this. And I need to reiterate no matter what you are going through right now, no matter what the, the score is, whether you, you're winning or losing, you need to know that God still sits on the throne. He's still at work and he reminds us in his word to hold fast to the hope that we have in him. God's kingdom, while starting really small from a very unlikely source, often seems hidden and unseen. But the reality is his kingdom is spreading and one day evil will be overcome and God's community will flourish and creation itself will be redeemed. Jesus wanted to talk about this and so he told two parables. One about a mustard seed and one about leaven. And so, but before we get to those parables, because we probably won't get to them today, but I think it's true to say that those close to me will know how my greatest bugbear right now is to continually hear people talking about post-COVID or post-corona and the new normal. You know, we, we asked questions like, how will ministry be different in the new normal? How will we conduct business under the new normal? How will we play sport in the new normal? And so on. To the point that I just want to scream. Yes, this pandemic is real, friends. It's concerning. It's taking away lives of loved ones. It's adding huge stress to, to so many, not least our medical workers right across the globe. But it will pass. The peak will pass. 
a vaccine will be found. Life will return to normal. Not a new normal, just normal. Ask anyone who went through the 1918 uh, flu epidemic where 500 million were infected and 50 million were estimated to have died. And those numbers are way short of actual numbers because they didn't have the technology that we have today to, to ascertain such numbers. Ask anyone who survived the two world wars. The first world war took 40 million lives. The second world war took between 70 and, and 90 million lives. Did they ever talk about what life would be like in the new normal? And within a few years after those wars, after that flu pandemic, life returned to normal. And yet here we are in 2020. And sure, there are 15 million infections and just over half a million deaths. But compare the numbers, friends. Compare that to those two world wars. Compare that to the flu uh, pandemic in 1918 and, of course, many other pandemics before that. And yet, so many are insistent on telling us that the world as we know it will never be the same again. And, you know, it reminds me of, of a word in response to that that I would want to use. And it's a word that uh, was used by a biology teacher that we had when I was in standard nine or ten. He came from America. He was one of these Rambo type guys. He used to come in a short sleeve shirt with rippling muscles, and he was in the Amazon for quite a few years, living off the land, eating berries and insects and cockroaches, and defending himself against snakes and scorpions and all this sort of thing and we used to spend half our time in our periods watching uh, slides of all uh, his exploits in the amazon jungle and one of the words that he always used to use uh, not only verbally but when you wrote a project or something and you 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 kind of said something in your project that you did, disagreed with he would write this word gradu all over it and I'll never forget that word, gradu, which in polite terms means garbage. And that's the kind of response I have to those who out there who say the world will never be the same place post-COVID. And I want to say gradu, the world will be the same place. And just another thing I want to add to that, and that is there's no such thing as post-COVID. You know, there's no such thing as post-flu, so why should there be such a thing as post-COVID? We will just be able to combat COVID in the same way that we combat flu. But COVID will all, always be around. And sooner or later, we got to get it, whether we like it or not. So let's just get that out of the way right up front. And so one thing I've noticed or experienced in, in the six or so decades of my life, and that is that the human being is incredibly resilient. The human being has incredible power to, to adapt. Over centuries, we as, as, as humans have suffered incredible loss, whether it's health, whether it's financial well-being, whether it's the loss of reputation or career or relational loss, emotional trauma, whatever it is. Humans have suffered that loss, yet they have been able to endure and sometimes even prosper after suffering all of these things. There have been those throughout human history who have suffered pain, rejection, isolation, persecution. We've been talking about the church that was persecuted that Peter wrote to. Uh, people who've endured torture and abuse. There have been people that have been cast into dungeons and jails and concentration camps and yet have emerged with unbroken spirits. But there's one thing that no human being can survive without friends. And we've spoken about this in one of our messages on Peter. We cannot live without hope. Hope is how we live. Hope is what gets us from one day to the next. You go to university with a hope of, of one day graduating. You graduate with a hope of getting a job. 
get a job in the hope that you'll establish a career. And if you're single, your hope is that you will re meet the right person and get married. And when you get married, you hope that you're going to have children. And you have children and you hope that they're going to grow up and, and end up being successful and contented the same way that you were. We live by hope. And when hope is gone, endurance, joy, energy, resolve, direction and courage, all of these vanish too. Life becomes a dull grind. When hope goes, you start to die inwardly. Solomon said in Proverbs 13, 12, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. And so where is our hope, friends? Is our hope being deferred? Or are we clinging to the hope that we already have in Jesus Christ our Lord? You see, here's the thing with hope. The issue is not whether you're a, a positive or a hopeful uh, person in general. We're not talking about becoming a more optimistic person despite the reality of what's going on around us. We're not talking about hoping to fulfill some desire that you happen to have. The issue is, are you putting your hope in the right thing? What are you hoping for? And Jesus comes along and says, put your hope in me. More specifically, put your hope in the kingdom of God. Put your hope in, in my plan for this world, in my plan for this nation, in my plan for, for your life and my purpose for you. And so that is why Jesus then expounds on two parables that help us to understand what, what this is all about. That we don't have to have to have a giant hope. In the same way, we don't have to have a giant faith. But he start talk, starts talking about the mustard seed and the leaven. And tomorrow, we'll, or rather on Monday, we'll see how, how that kind of ties in with this whole theme of hope in times of discouragement. And so I pray that we'll cling to that hope. And I pray that we will, we will kind of close our ears to all these dissenting voices out there. These voices that want to instill fear, these voices that continually insist that everything's going to be different. Folks, I really encourage you. Your hope is in God. He is the rock of all ages. He is the anchor for our soul. Let's not listen to, to the voices of, of humans with all their hype and, and all their, their, their bad press that basically makes us more and more discouraged. And so let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you that our courage is in you. And that we do not need to be discouraged because of the things that are happening around and about us. That we can put our hope in you. And we pray, Lord God, that we will just shut our ears to all the voices that are telling us otherwise. That this world will never be the same again. As if this is the worst pandemic that's ever hit this earth and we know lord that it is one of the minor pandemics that's hit this earth and so we pray lord god that we would be encouraged today that we will listen to your voice and your word and not listen to the words of others who want to uh, instill in us uh, uh, discouragement and and alarm and so we just give ourselves to you this day as we go into this weekend, Lord. We pray your blessing on us and on our families. For those of us who are able to, to be with family, we pray that we would treasure those moments. Because, Lord, we know that in due course we may look back on this time and, and really uh, long for, for the times that we've had to spend with our, our families and our children and loved ones. And so bless us as we uh, continue into this weekend and as we come to again this here uh, some of the descriptions of your church on sunday when we look at 1 peter 2 we pray lord god that we would be ready to hear your word again and to to claim our identity in you and so bless us as we go into this day we ask in jesus name amen amen well bless you all have a wonderful day and remember put your hope in the lord amen